like that child my life was golden moving in these streets without being The very last song on J. Cole's 2018 album K.O.D. is called 1985. This song acts as a warning to all up-and-coming rappers about their inevitable demise, with lyrics telling them how they should manage their money, criticizing their looks, and telling them how their music won't last more than a couple years. When the song dropped, the consensus was that J. Cole sounded like a grumpy old head complaining about the next generation. Now it's four and a half years later, and looking back, J. Cole predicted the future with incredible accuracy. It's important to note that the 1985 record probably would never have been made if Lil Pump didn't attack J. Cole first. In early 2017, while Pump was buzzing in the SoundCloud world, he noticed his comment section on social media was flooded with people typing, fuck J. Cole. Why? No reason. So Pump ran with it and started trolling J. Cole because it made his fans mad and got his engagement up. The 17-year-old rapper posted a video of him in the studio working on what seemed to be a diss track. However, this song was never released and was probably just another social media stunt to add to his long history of social media clout chasing. Cole never addressed the low pump drama until one full year later when he dropped his album K.O.D. The last track, 1985, was where he tried to address Pump and all the new generation rappers. All these dudes poppin' now is young. Everybody say the music that they make is dumb. Lil Pump, Smoke Perp, and 6 9 were assumed to be the artist Cole was addressing in the record, but really it was just a general message to all rappers. In 2016 and 2017, there was a cultural divide between young rappers, their fans, and old rappers and their fans. It's commonly referred to as the clout rap era. The young rappers didn't feel like they owed respect for the lyrical rappers or classic hip-hop enthusiasts, and the old heads didn't really deserve it because they were quick to make fun of the young rappers for their image, lack of lyrics, and attitude. J. Cole has kept the spirit of traditional 90s hip-hop even through the 2010s and 2020s. Some of his fans look at him as like the only hope for hip-hop, which makes him a very easy target since his fans are so passionate about his music. Money, pussy, parties, I was on the same thing. You gotta give a boy a chance to grow some. Everybody talking like they know something these days. Man, they barely old enough to drive. To tell them what they should do, who the fuck am I? Cole empathizes with the young dudes. The clout era rappers he was referring to focused a little bit more on the image and the lifestyle than the music. They typically had more likes on Instagram than people listening to their songs. But Cole admits that he was also attracted to the lifestyle, and it almost seems hypocritical for him to be giving them advice. I heard one of them diss me, I'm surprised. This is obviously where he's talking about Lil Pump. I ain't trippin', listen good to my rep. You haven't had vodka soda like this. Why? Come here, little man, let me talk with you. See if I can paint you the one of them diss me, I'm surprised. This is obviously where he's talking about Lil Pump. I ain't trippin', listen good to my reply. Come here, little man, let me talk with you. See if I can paint you the large picture. Congrats, you made it out your mama house. I hope you make enough to buy your mama house. Lil Pump, four years later, did in fact buy his mama house. I did everything I wanted to do. I moved my mom out of the hood. Yep. I moved my whole family out of the hood. Yep. My family straight. I see your watch icy and your whip foreign. I got some good advice, never quit touring, cause that's the way we eat here in this rap game. Rappers are commonly trapped in really bad contracts where they only receive about 10 to 20% of the revenue earned from album sales and streams. Whereas their tours and live performances, they keep everything. So a rapper might sell 500,000 records and make $100,000, or do four shows in one weekend and make the same amount. But when you factor in how much time and effort goes into finalizing and releasing an album versus a 30 to 60 minute performance, you realize how much faster and easier that show money is. Lil Pump and 6 9 have resorted to doing tours overseas. They still have large fan bases outside of the USA, and they could still make a huge paycheck. But neither of them really ever do shows in the US, probably because the crowds would be much smaller, which would mean less money, and most likely people making fun of them on social media. I hear your music and I know that rap's changed. A bunch of folks would say that's a bad thing, because everything's commercial and it's pop now. Trap drums is the shit that's hot now. See, I've been on a quest for the next wave, but never mind, that was just a segue. He also hints that these artists shouldn't be trend hopping and making music to satisfy the current sound. After Gucci Gang in 2017, Pump struggled to make noise with another record. Esket It, Drug Addicts, Be Like Me, Butterfly Doors. Surprisingly, all these songs did hit the Billboard Hot 100, but faded away faster than ever. 
Pump undoubtedly had a huge fan base that were eager for him to come up with something fresh, so they would tune into the next song only to realize it sounded exactly like the last one. Plus, people that hated him wanted to see what he was going to do next as well. The same thing could be said for 6 9 Also, it was most likely his legal issues and gang affiliations that ruined his career. His music didn't evolve much, neither did the names of his songs. To be fair though, there is a fine line of sticking with a sound and just making the same song over and over again. As much as people hate on DaBaby, musically he achieved a lot of success by making very similar sounding music for three years straight, but who am I kidding? Today it's not looking so good for him either. I know you think this type of revenue is never ending, but I want to take a minute just to tell you that ain't true. One day them kids listening gonna grow up and get too old for that shit that made you blow up. Now your show's looking light cause they don't show up, which unfortunately means the money slow up. These could be the lines that cut the deepest, mostly for Smoke Perp. You see, after 1985 dropped, a clip went viral of fans at a Smoke Perp show chanting, And Perp continued the energy of hating on Cole. Before the show, they were chanting F J Cole because we are kids on drugs, bitch. You know what's going on. Two years later, his album Florida Jit sold 5K in the first week. Then in 2022, Perp's 16 year old rebel fan base was now 21. They grew up and they didn't show up to his tour. His crowds were looking scarce. Perp started going viral for nobody showing up to his shows. Instead of putting on a performance and rocking out to the small crowds, Perp would just leave early or cancel his own shows. Then the money slows up, and oh boy was this evident. All of the clout era rappers have resorted to some cheap Instagram promotions. Partnered up with High Key Cloud, and so look, we're giving away $10,000. Yo, this is Smoke Perp, and I'm teaming up with High Key Cloud to give away a free $10,000. What's up guys, it's Lil Skies, and I'm teaming up with High Key Cloud to do a giveaway. Yo, this is the Kid, I'm teaming up with High Key Cloud to give away $10,000. Dollars cash. It's your boy Big 14. I'm not a team double high key clock, you know what I'm saying? And we're giving away 10k cash. Blue face, baby. Yeah, right, man. I partnered up with high key clock, wireless headphones. We're giving away 10k cash. Lil Xan promoting sketchy crypto coins. Yo, what's going on, guys? I want you to check out this new token called Marvin Inu. Super dope man, and they're about to take off. 6ix9ine promoting multiple NFT scams. Blueface doing influencer boxing events. It's possible that the pandemic hurt everyone's shows, and maybe these artists could have rode their wave a little longer. But now people are being very selective who they go out and see live. Now you scrambling and hoping to get hot again, but you forgot you only popped because you were riding trends. Now you old news and you going through regrets. Smoke Perp was caught buying Instagram followers. Cuffboys noticed that every time his follower count dropped below 4 million, it would randomly shoot up by multiple thousands. He also tried to attack Kanye on Instagram for saying that he wrote I love it and Ye owes him 9 million dollars. And Kanye, nigga, you owe me like 9 million dollars, nigga. Hit my line, nigga, or my lawyer's gonna hit your lawyer, nigga. Just doing anything for clout. Lil Pump did the same thing, posted ridiculous pictures on the internet for attention, shaved his eyebrows, claimed he was going to start making rock music. In my opinion, he hit an all-time low when he decided to make a song with the YouTubers, the Dobre Brothers. Hit It If You Know You Lit was the most awkward and horrible song I have ever heard. Hit it if you know you lit. If you know you lit. Pump visibly looked like he hated himself for doing the music video. Then he managed to get some attention when Trump called him Little Pimp. One of the big superstars of the world, Little Pimp. Sure, he could have genuinely been a supporter, even though he tweeted F Trump during his 2016 run, but that's fine. There's a dual party for a reason. Regardless, it was pretty clear that Lil Pump was scrambling to get hot and he would lean into whatever was getting him attention. Just like the whole reason he said fuck J. Cole in the first place. I'm just telling you what's probably gonna happen when you rapping about the type of shit you rapping about. It's a faster route to the bottom. I wish you good luck. I'm hoping for your sake that you ain't as dumb as you look. Surprisingly, the two actually had a one hour long sit down conversation one month after the record dropped to discuss their differences. That was like basically like the trend, like, you know? If I was saying J. Cole, whatever, blah, blah. It was even like serious, like, I f with your shit. This shit's hard, you know? Yeah, thank you, bro. I mean, I realized that at, in time. Right, it was all trolling and shit. Yeah, for sure. Despite all the respectable and honorable game that J. Cole tried to give, Lil Pump still did everything Cole predicted in 1985. And today, Lil Pump is in denial. Do you, I f with J. Cole. Yeah. There's, I don't have no problems with him. Do you feel like he predicted kind of like what ended up happening with your rap career? Nope. No. Because I'm still here. Sure, Pump is still here in a physical sense, but an extremely small percentage of his audience is interested in what he's going to bring.
skyscraper. I rise in skyscraper. Tops, plenty paper. Money, plenty paper. We getting it. Tell my haters. Tell them what? Tell my haters. Tell them what? I'm on a mission. I'm on one. I see them later. Let's get it. Skyscraper. Uh. Skyscraper. All of them. Plenty paper. One, four, nine. Plenty paper. Hey, Tell my haters. Tell my haters. We're I'm on a mission. Let's get it. I see them later. You know what time it is. Skyscrapers, new paper, green gators matching new paper. Money, ice, silver, and black Oakland Raiders. Shining. More money, more problems, more haters. <laughs> I'm serving all tables like a waiter. Wait, wait, Feeling like snowman, got my waiter. Right down a fab bump and Jada. All them. Letter to big, y'all know what it baby, is. Baby. Skyscraper, I ride in skyscraper. Tops, plenty paper, money, plenty paper. We getting it. Tell my haters, tell them what. Tell my haters, tell them what. I'm on a mission. I'm on one. I see them later. Let's get it. Skyscraper, uh. skyscraper, all them. Plenty paper, one, four, nine. plenty paper. Hey, tell my haters, tell my haters. We're I'm on a mission. Let's get it. I see them later.